for communicating with the PC, this is how we're going to be able to do it. Uh, again, this is the, the default port we use, and the default setup is TCP and as a slave. And we'll get to that in a second. Um, but it's important to note that these are defaults, and we can set them as anything we'd like. So let's look again at the TCP IP socket in it. We're going to select again socket 1. Our protocol we're going to use in this case is TCP. You can note the other protocols we support. Uh, UDP, UDP raw, uh, and TCP raw if we want to send raw packets. Um, HTTP, if we want to use the built-in web server functionality, we're going to use this. Uh, ICMP and uh, SNMP, if we're going to use a uh, email function, we're going to select SNMP. But in this case, in this example, we're just going to communicate uh, from our PC to the controller. So we're going to select TCP. And again, our port, again by default, is 20256. We can note again that we can give an indirect address. And we're going to set it up as a slave. Now, what does this mean? Um, when we select slave, we put the controller into a listen mode. So the controller will listen and wait for a connection on the IP address, uh, in this case, 10.2.2.56, and on socket 1 on port 20256. <clears throat> you can also consider this to be the, a server setting, if you like. And we're going to set it as a slave and hit OK. Now, we didn't do a whole lot. Again, we have our startup bit. Uh, when we start the controller, it's going to be active for just the first hand. We've given it the PLC name, 570. We've given it the IP address, 10.2.2.56. And we've given it a socket initialization of socket 1, TCP, port 20256. <coughs> and we've determined it's going to be a slave. Uh, so I'm going to download this to my controller. And then we're going to take a look at how we can connect over Ethernet. So if you notice on the bottom left corner, my communication settings are uh, COM8 and 115200. I'm just going to change those really quick. Again, to set up our communication, connection, communication OS. And we can set our communication to the PLC settings here. I'm going to use COM1. And I'm going to keep the baud rate at 115200. Uh, if we want to do a check again, we can hit the Get OPLC Information button. We return, we are connected to our V570 with our operating system. Now this is very important, uh, this Get OPLC Information button. Uh, first, it determines whether we have communication to the controller or not. So if we want to do a simple test to see if we can communicate to the controller, this is a good button to use. Sorry, it got quiet. Can you hear me better now? Can you hear me now? Lost audio is still quiet. Can you hear me now? You can hear me? Okay. Is everyone else able to hear me? Just barely. Let me turn this up. Is this better? Test one, two, three. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Okay, so what I was saying was the get OPLC information. Oh, okay. I apologize. I tried to mute it while I was coughing. I guess I, uh, I turned it back on at a low level. Uh, let me just recap again. Uh, I set my communication settings to communicate with the PLC here as COM1 and 115200. And this is over the regular serial communication. Oh, well, what is going on? I don't think I can make it any louder anymore. Can you hear me now?
Okay, is this better? Can you hear me now? Yes? Okay. Thank you. Uh, I apologize for that. I guess I hit the mute button, and it disconnected my headset. And when I tried to re-enable it, it selected my PC mic. So that's not good. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, let me just recap here one more time. Uh, to, to download this program to my controller, I'm going to use Serial. We haven't gotten to TCP yet. I set my communication on my PC's COM1 at the board rate of 115200. Uh, again, we're going to use the Get OPLC Information button. This should return the model and the OS. Uh, this is a very useful test to see if we have communication to the PLC. If we can do this test, uh, we can also download our program to the controller. Uh, what else does this let us do? If we're connecting from across the country, it lets us ensure that we're communicating with uh, at least the correct model of controller that we expect. Uh, if we see that we return a, a V350 and we're expecting a 570, well, we might have something wrong, either the, the IP address or we're not connected to the, uh, the right controller. Um, okay, so I'm going to exit here and I'm going to select from connection, download. Now I'm going to use the stop, download, and reset function. Uh, notice we have a couple. Uh, if I download this to the controller and the controller does not reset, I will not activate SB2. If I don't activate SB2, I'll never set the PLC name, the card in it, or the socket in it. And if I don't do that, I won't be able to communicate over TCP. Uh, so connection, download, stop, download, and reset. Notice that uh, our progress bar in the bottom left-hand corner here and our communication settings. Uh, this note says uh, this is different than the current project. Are you sure you want to download it? We're going to hit yes to all the messages that come up. Again, these are uh, kind of like a double check to make sure we are doing what we expect. Okay. Uh, are there any questions so far? Do we need to recap on anything? Uh, I notice a couple more people connected. Everyone can hear okay now? <laughs> Okay, so again, we've downloaded our PLC name, card in it, socket in it. Uh, let's do our communication check using our get OPLC information. So again, to change our communication settings with VisiLogic, we're going to select communication NOS. And this time, instead of using serial, I'm going to use TCP IP call. Now let's take a quick second and just discuss what this means, the difference between call and listen. <clears throat> the TCP protocol is a handshaking protocol. You notice that we had the option for UDP uh, earlier in the socket in it. Um, we're not using it. We're using TCP. So we are going to use, uh, we're going to create a handshake. Uh, what this means is the TCP IP protocol has uh, error checking and connection uh, built into the protocol. We need to first connect to a device before we can communicate to it. Uh, UDP is a little different. I can give you the example of UDP as streaming audio or video. If we're streaming audio, uh, we're streaming video, we don't necessarily care if we lost a packet uh, five seconds ago because it has nothing to do with uh, the current information coming down. Uh, with TCP, we have error checking built in that ensures that every packet our controller is uh, or any device is sending uh, is actually received on the receiving end, and it's received correctly. So TCP uh, gives us a little more uh, security and um, a little more reliability. We will know if what we are intending to send to our device uh, gets there or not. And we'll know this because we'll have a failure of connection. Uh, with UDP, uh, again with a broadcast protocol, we don't actually know whether the information got there or not. So uh, from here, we're going to select project settings. We have to enter in some information. Uh, this is the TCP IP project settings menu. The first thing we're going to enter is the IP address. So if we double click here, notice that we can enter an IP address. 
This is nice because if we just open Visilogic and want to connect to a controller, we can type it in. Uh, one, one nice uh, feature we have is select IP address from project. So this is going to look at the TCP IP card in it we have here and pull up the IP address we used. We can select it and hit OK. Now, the protocol, TCP or UDP, we're going to select TCP. The port number, 20256. This is determined by the socket we have <coughs> in the port. Uh, again, we set socket 1 to port 20256 as a slave, so it'll be open and waiting and listening for us to connect. And now the PLC name, uh, we called the controller 570, so we have to use the PLC name, 570. Now, I should have done a test here with some letters. It's very important to note that the PLC name is case sensitive. Uh, if we type in uh, test in capital letters in the PLC name configuration block, we type in test in lowercase letters here in the PLC name under the project settings, we will not be able to connect to the controller. Uh, just to do an example of this, I'm going to remove the zero and hit OK. And let's get OPLC information. and we're attempting to connect. <coughs> and notice we have a failure of communication. Okay, let's go back and we'll add our zero back in. Okay, and we should work now. <laughs> oh, but we didn't work. What did I do? Okay, I apologize. Let me see if I typed something in wrong. Seventy, yes. Okay, we can do another test. We want to make sure that the device is on the network that we're communicating to. And we are timing out here. Uh. Oh, jeez. I'm sorry, I will uh, fix one quick thing. You did.